Hey guys, it's John of Figurative Arc. I've got another video editing tutorial. Today's is going to look at the free edition of the VSDC video editor. This version was released in July 29th of 2016. And most of the features are the same as the previous version. So the older videos that you can see on my playlist on my channel will still be instructive to you as far as using the editor, but I am going to be updating some of them to reflect the changes. So that's what the video is about. Today, I'm going to look at how the skin of the editor looks different as well as how to add text. It has changed slightly, so I'm going to show you that in the video today. So when you launch the editor, uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to get a screen like this and you can do screen captures, video captures with the software. But today I'm just going to kind of show you how to start a blank project and then how to add text, almost as if you're putting together some opening credits for a video project. So I'm going to click on blank project. Now here, this is important right here because sometimes when people start a project, they get kind of willy nilly with some of these settings without really thinking about what they're doing. And so here it's asking you to type in a name. You can type in other information about who owns the copyright and who published this. But look down here. Uh, here it's going to say, okay, I want my project to be at full high definition what it has a list of, um, has a pull down box where you can uh, adjust that depending on what you shot in. Then it asks about the frame rate. You know, how many pictures per second did you film it at? And what happens is if you set this project at 24 and you shot it in 30, unless you make some changes when you convert it, you're going to have some problems with things like audio and video that doesn't sync up correctly. So it really pays to know your video settings and how you shot the video that you are working on in your project, otherwise it's going to mess up. A similar thing is true with the frequency of the audio. So if you're using audio files, uh, what frequency were those files recorded at? And again, if you convert this and you set it up as one thing and your frequency was another to use, you could end up with no audio or static or different problems. So just be kind of aware, look at the properties of your files to figure out what you're actually working with. I'm going to set it up like this. Go ahead and click on finish. Now I'm going to show you how to do text. And so what I do is I go up to the editor tab, I go into add objects, and I select text. Here is saying, where do you want the text to start? I want it to start at the beginning of the scene. You could start it anywhere in the scene. This says, how long do you want the text to appear on the screen? I'll change it to seven seconds. I'll click on OK. Then what happens is I can draw out a box. To make it the same size as the box, I can click on this property window, same size as the parent, and there it is. Now to do text, the way they do it now, they used to have it where you entered it, the text into the properties window. Now what you do is you click on the editor tab again and you can start making some selections here as far as your fonts and special features. And what ends up happening is you can type right into the screen. Now when I go back, I can center that text. I can click on it again and I can place it in the uh, center of the screen, right like that. Now you'll kind of notice one of the things that I don't like about this update is every time that you make a selection here, you notice that what happens is you lose the screen. 
and then I have to keep on clicking on it. So I don't know that this is necessarily a good improvement because now I'm having to go back and forth, back and forth, you know, every time. Make sure that that text is selected. But see, I'm having to go back over and over and over again. So I don't know that this is a really an improvement. To me, it just makes it more of a hassle. But anyway, that's how it's changed. And so now if I click on Preview, you know, there it is. And then if I had video or something else after this that I added, then that would appear. So that's how to, to set up a, a project from scratch and how the text feature works. So please consider subscribing to my channel if you like how-to videos like this. I've also got a number of short films that you can check out on my channel as well. And if you go to my playlist section, I've kind of organized everything in the playlist so you can very quickly find what part do you need help with in terms of using this video editing. So thanks for watching, guys. Feel free to post in the comments if you have any questions about this or something you're trying to do with your video project. And I look forward to seeing you on the channel sometime soon. Bye.